How are we going everyone? Today's topic is tree in the pot, growing a tree in the pot. I'm going to use this one here as an example. This is our honey mercot mandarin, full of fruit on it as well. But before we get into it, just to make a quick announcement about our Coburg outlet. Our Coburg Garden Centre in Coburg is open direct to the public outlet. So that means you can click and collect or you can just pop in there at your leisure and order and pick up whatever you want. All products there are discounted heavily as well. So it is wholesale uh, trade uh, price available to public directly so folks you ain't going to get a cheaper price everything is really cheap back to the topic what we have here is a mandarin now some of the questions that i've had coming through to me is can you grow a tree in the pot yes you can what sort of pot should i use well if you go with a plastic pot you're going to have issues long term meaning there's not it's not breathable it doesn't breathe it doesn't allow air to penetrate except for the little holes that are at the bottom of the pots so that's a plastic pot so ultimately you need to transplant it or repot it if you can now if it gets to a large pot like a 50 centimeter 70 centimeter pot obviously that's too heavy and too hard to handle and manoeuvre to transplant so i'll show you a little trick on how to fix that problem if you use a terracotta pot that's porous as well if it's glazed it's just much it's just as much like a plastic pot so a terracotta pot will give it better airflow and you'll notice that because when you water it moisture absorbs into the walls of the pot itself so that's an indicator to tell you it's porous which means it breathes better but nothing breathes as well as these grow pots these are a felt bag style pot i've had these in here for a couple of years now at least let's have a look at the bottom There's, there are no holes but the entire the entire bag itself breathes. <clears throat> See the bottom there? Beautiful, clean. We've got plants or weeds trying to grow into it. They, they'll really struggle to penetrate through. So this is all external root growth here going on, folks, and brush cutting as well. So this is a couple of years old. Nothing gets in there. Only moisture and air are able to penetrate through the walls perfectly and ideal for the root system of any tree or plant that you're growing in it. What do I mean by that? It means that because it's porous and airflow can get through, the roots won't grow so much in a circular motion or, you know, in a round motion, but they'll grow straight out. And because the air penetrates through, they, the roots will sense that and they'll try over time to penetrate through. If they do, it's simple. Do nothing unless they grow really, really strong or it's a monsteria or something like that, aerial roots. In this case here, these roots will try and grow through and if they do, the sun will scorch and it'll dry them up and you can trim them off quite easily. But in the case of a terracotta pot or a plastic pot or a glaze pot or a metal pot, where you don't have that porosity in the walls, uh, where the roots won't be able to penetrate through, they wrap themselves around, they become pot bound. So after three or five years, if you've got a tree in the, in the pot, from three to five years, Pretty much you can guarantee it'll start to be pot bound if it's not a large enough pot. You can pot up if you like. But what happens if you buy a beautiful, beautiful terracotta or a feature pot? And that's 70 centimetres round. The tree's been in there for five or 17 years. It could be a lily pilly, one of those topiaries which grow really fast, big strong roots and it becomes pot bound. What do you do with that pot? You're not going to want to turf it out, do you? So what we can do with that is repot it but without taking the plant out of the pot. So what I'm going to do first is demonstrate how you do that. Then we're going to feed it with our liquid gold and Nikkei Butch and a little bit of sea, uh, superfood as well. You need a drill bit. So in a case like this, what do you do when you've got a tree that's so big and you can't transplant it, you can't lift it out? Well, what I've got here is a bit on here. It's not an auger bit, but it looks like one. It's an actual masonry bit. It's designed to go through concrete and hard surfaces and stones. You can get auger bits which have the same sort of contours but are a lot more flared out so they come a lot larger in diameter. Ideal is about 20 mil diameter uh, uh, bits, auger bit, and you want it to be at least 40 or 50 centimetres long. Why? Because we need to get down deep below. What I'm going to do with this bit is basically drill holes all the way around. Now, it should be a larger bit. For the purpose of the demonstration, this is a little bit narrow. I do have one in the shed somewhere, but yours truly has put it somewhere and he can't remember where he put it, so we're going to go with this one. What we do is basically, let me slow the speed down on this. It doesn't have to be so fast. Drill holes all the way through like that. Now, the bigger the bits, folks, the more likely you're going to encounter some of the roots of the tree. And be careful if you're using a masonry bit and you hit the bottom, you may actually drill right through the pot itself as well. So avoid going all the way to the base. There we are. I just felt some roots getting cut off there. 
And that's okay, and I'll explain why. Now, this pot really doesn't need to be drilled like this because it still hasn't grown to its full capacity, the root system that is, but <laughs> many people out there, excuse me, have got popped, uh, pot plants that have popped out and they can't take them out. And you can see the plants starting to, to deteriorate, discolour, drop leaves and things like that. So by drilling holes all the way through in your pot like that, you're severing off some of the roots, not all of them obviously, but I mean the bigger the drill bit, the more holes you do, the more likelihood of more roots you're going to cut off. What happens to that part of the root that's been severed off, that's been taken off from the main root ball? It actually starts to de decay. It breaks down, it becomes, you know, compost, organic matter, carbon for the microbes. The microbiome in the soil that lives there, they're going to feed off that. But to help that along as well, we do one more thing. We've created little holes. And in those holes, because you want to get the fertilizer down below, you want to add and populate the microbes and all the fungi that goes in there, all the good stuff. So get your superfood, fine stuff, and you can see here, this is the fine with a black grit um, added to it, which enhances its ability for nutrient release. We get some of this, and we just basically drop it in a hole like that. Have a look at this, just filter it into there and fill up the hole with superfood. We're adding the nutrients down below where we want to get it to activate a lot quicker. And that's great. Now, what we've done is we've cut off some of the roots, if it's a pot-bound plant, and that's all going to decay along with the superfood and black grit. We're just going to basically enhance the, the micro life, the microbiome life in the soil tenfold. So what does that do for the tree? Well, you've cut the root ball off. It's like bonsaiing a plant, basically, but without having to take the plant out of the pot. So you cut off those roots, so where it's been cut off from the main part, that part of the root's going to start growing back, so you're initiating new root development. By fertilising like this, and this won't burn them, as you know, we won't burn them. Fertilising like this, the plant's going to take it up a lot quicker, new roots will grow, they'll feed off the old roots, and then you're giving it another burst of life, at least two or three years of life in the pot there. So you can go around and do this once a year, if you like. Winter's about the best time to do it, That's that's when the trees are less susceptible to die back and, and stress of all that. So do it as we're going in the next three months. Drill through the pots, drill and add your fertilizer. It has to be superfood. I can't recommend any other fertilizer, folks, only because I don't know how safe or dangerous they're gonna to be to your plants. This stuff here is the safest as houses. So drill your holes, put that in there with a the black grid. Give it a good water with liquid gold and Nikkei Butch at half strength. Now, what I mean by half strength, this is the stuff here. 9 litre watering can, you put 2 caps of this 500 ml bottle, whereas if you've got the 1 litre bottles, you only put 1 cap, because they've got a larger cap. So 2 little caps as opposed to 4 normally, 2 caps in lined litres of each one, like this. That's 1, 2, I did this last time but I didn't do the demonstration and everybody wants to see me how I do it, so here we go. Huh? This is how Vasily pours EK Butcher liquid gold, and that caps What's this? this is the uh, not quite right bottle, and I get the leftovers, do I? Fantastic. Ooh, I smell like it now. There we go. One, two. That's it there. So two caps of each in the 500 ml bottle. Remember that, folks, two caps of this size bottle. If you've got the one litre bottle, it's only one cap because they have a larger lid on them. Remember that. It's like when I say the cafe is not open, then you all turn up to the store and say, why isn't the cafe open? But you said it was open. No, I didn't. It's not open. So <laughs> it's not open. No, open, closed. Okay, so back to here. Fill it up. And that's the half strength version of it, which means you can use it more often, every week if you like, or every fortnight, which is the average. This product you can apply once a month, which is adequate. But at half strength, you can do it as often as you like. So we fill that up, nine litres. So what have we done? Drilled holes, back filled it with our superfood, now feeding it on top with that, and that's it. You don't need to do that again, the drilling that is, for another six months to a year. Depends on how fast. Now, is that car? Yes, it is. Cara, you're going to have a little bit of EK Butch on your back. You want to move, sweetheart? Sweetie? Hello? Hello? Hey, come here. Come here. Good girl. All right? And that's not a sign of her weakness, all right? She's just calm and collected at the moment. Here he is, jealous boy. Give it a good soak. You can see I actually stop between the watering stages. I don't try and put it all nine litres at one. And the pot like this is going to take up nine litres easily, folks. Watch it sink. Watch it sink. This is, what you're looking at in there, is our compost. That's the new compost that we're going to bring out. We should have brought out by now, but we'll have it out in the next week or two. 
This is the compost that we have that we mix with our superfood and cocoa pith and it's a perfect planting mix. So just let it soak in slowly like that. And that's how you fix a pop bound plant, folks. There we are. Done. All right, so if you've got pop bound plants that haven't been replaced for years and you can't take them out because they're too big, drill holes, fill them up, fertilize them, water them in and sit back and relax and watch the magic happen. It's all available on our website, VasilisGarden.com. Two outlets, Lethbridge and Coburg. You can click and collect, direct to public outlets. So folks, check it all out. 1300 627 374 for all orders if you like to place bulk order from Eva Silly, Marisi.